Hello, welcome to Dan's Model Works today. Today we are working on part two of our classic Packard Boat Tail Speedster. And as I explained last time, this kit was started by my dad probably at least 33, 35 years ago. In part one, we painted the chassis semi gloss black and we painted the engine parts. So now we're going to start working on the basically the lower floor pan and the body. Okay, here we go. We're ready to start painting these. We have two main parts. We've got the main body, and then we've got the hood. I've already washed these parts in some just regular dish detergent, some hot water. Then I made sure I rinsed them off very, very thoroughly. Main reason for doing that is to make sure there's no uh, finger print grease on them. And even if you're taking the parts right out of the box, it's always a good idea to give them a wash because you never know, they might have some mold release on them. I have them, marked, I have them mounted on some wooden blocks. And this is, looks like an old pill container or something like that. The old Badger 250 is ready to go. I've had that for probably about 35 years. And we're going to be using Tester's Bright Light Blue. Okay, we're ready to paint. We'll turn on the air. And we'll turn on the blower. Now, turning our attention to the underside, we can see that in the middle here, there's a little placard that has copyright, monogram, models incorporated, all rights reserved, and we've got a couple of ejector pin marks there. So let's see if we can get those out. I'm planning on painting this wood underneath here, but It's not important that it be perfect. It would just look nice if it was fully detailed. Ejector pin marks are either sunken or raised. In this case, they're sunken. So, a little smear of putty. Pretty much the only way we're going to take care of these. If I'm careful when I sand, most of the molded in wood grain should survive. All right, now that the putty has had a chance to dry, I'm going to scrape as much off with a chisel blade before I come at it with the sandpaper. Now we're 
sanding the putty. Now remember, I don't want to I don't want smooth as a baby's bottom here. I want want it to be rough because there's already some wood grain here and I want to I want the areas I've repaired to blend in with that. As I mentioned in part 1, this part of the body was painted 30 odd years ago. And I don't even know what color paint was used other than it was a dark blue. Unfortunately, the undersides of the fenders uh, weren't caught by the spray paint. So I've got some Tamiya blue. I'm pretty sure it used to be called Royal Blue. So let's see how close this is. Actually, it is pretty close, given that we shouldn't really have anywhere on the top of the body this new blue coming up against the old blue. I'm going to paint the entire underside of the, the fender with this new blue. So, it shouldn't be too noticeable that the blues are different. And we're just finishing up the underside here. This piece here I'm going to be painting either steel or silver. That's the fuel tank. I'm really happy with the way this Tamiya paint went on. Sometimes Tamiya paint goes on streaky and it requires a second coat. This is going on really nice and solid. Very, very happy with it. Okay, and we set this aside to dry. As you can see, I'm painting tester steel on the fuel tank. That's what this has hanging down. I debated whether I was going to make it silver or whether I was going to use steel. In the end, because the previously painted steel, or the previously painted silver exhaust pipe is going to be running past it, and I thought the contrast between steel and silver would be would look good right here. If this was visible on the top side of the car, I probably would have used chrome silver. Now I'm using that Vallejo brown again, same one I used for the carpeting, to paint these wooden panels underneath. I really could have used any color because these uh, these pieces of wood would have been painted. They wouldn't have lovingly stained them and varnished them like they would have for wood inside the, the vehicle. This area here, they would have been intended to preserve the wood as much as possible. I just thought it would look good painted brown. It would be a good Contrast to the blue of the metal parts. So that's why I use the brown here. Okay, as you can see here, I've put masking tape around the around the, the running boards here. There's actually supposed to be a chrome surround and then a rubber mat on the inside. Now, I'm going to try doing this just using some Tester's Chrome Silver, which is probably about the shiniest paint you're going to get. And if I'm happy with that, I'm going to leave it at that. If, if it's not shiny enough, then I might bare metal foil it. We'll just have to see. Now, I put the masking tape down because... I figure even if I freehand it and get it super straight, there'll probably be enough waiver that I won't be happy with it. Whereas hopefully with the masking tape, 
well, have a nice straight edge. And as always, when you're going to be painting something else, you don't have to be really careful on this inner part because you're going to be painting it black. There, next step will be painting those inner parts black. Okay, now I'm putting a second coat of German Grey on the running boards. I'm using German Grey because sometimes I find using black for rubber makes it seem a little too intense. Sometimes it's a scale effect. Going 100% makes things too dark. Now we have a little chrome cover that's got to go in right here. Probably covers over the battery box. Because it's a deep box there in the fender well. I've scraped out the paint that was on there. And as well, the plating on the bottom of this has been scraped off. I already test fit it so I know it's going to fit in there. There we go. Here I've glued the chassis to the under frame to the pan. And basically right here and right here and above the axles are the only spots that it really wants to make contact with that. Uh, floor pan. So that's where I have concentrated clearing off uh, the paint, putting some glue on, and now I'm, I've got it clamped and clothes pinned. And as you can see, I got some weight here holding another part down. I'll take a look at it in a little while, make sure that it's taking effect. The front end is kind of floating, but it's not like it's going to go anywhere. Okay, now we're going to work on the radiator. We have a main body of the radiator. There's a part that goes in behind. Like that. I'm going to be painting this back bit steel. And as well, they have an optional part here on the front, which they call the stone guard. And they have it fitted on the front on the front of the box. And I think it looks pretty gnarly, so I'm going to use that part. But they say if you're going to use this part, there are some holes that need to be drilled out. So we're going to do that next. Okay, the holes have been drilled out. And we're past the point of no return now. I have to use the stone guard. And you can see some brown right there and there where I've scraped away the chrome. And that's to hold the back of the radiator on. So we'll put some glue on there. Slide that in place. Looks like it could do with a little bit of pressure. Indy clothes pin just to make sure that it's going to stay. Now what I'm doing right here is I'm putting a wash on the stone guard. And I find that most grills and front ends on model cars greatly benefit from this process. Once it dries, it light, it'll lighten up a bit from what you see here. And the highlights of the chrome will still be bright and shiny. But all of the lower areas which really should be transparent anyway, representing something darker in behind. Well, it will look a lot better. It'll give it a lot more depth. I'll 
show a before and after picture after this. Now I'm tackling the radiator. As you can see, the, the front I've put a wash on it to darken it up. Now the back side, which is usually the, the business side, normally isn't quite as pretty, even on something like a Packard. I've decided I'm going to paint it all copper with the exception of just these edge pieces here. I'll paint those steel. And then I'm going to put on a fairly heavy wash to darken it up. How correct this is going to be, I don't know, but we'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, now we're going to paint a little bit of steel just on the sides of the copper portion of the radiator. Just the parts that would have been used for support. Like I said, I'm going to put a dark wash on this. That'll help to blend all this together. Now I'm going to put the stone guard in front of the radiator. It's just a little bit easier to use a couple dabs of super glue here rather than to try to scrape all the plating off on these parts. This is a fairly low stress part, so I'm not too worried about using super glue on it. There we go. I still have to put the wash on the back of it. Now here I am, I'm putting a wash on the back of the radiator just to give the copper a little bit more depth and now I'm just test fitting one of these little brackets here there's three of these to go on each side of the car sharp eyed viewers may have seen that there was three spots that were brown on the side of the frame before I assemble it I'd already pre-scraped the plastic there so that I could glue them on now I'm just debating whether I'm going to paint those semi-gloss black before I take them off the sprue and glue them in place. I think that's what I might do. But I just took one off in advance just to see how well they were going to fit on there. There's the part glued in place. I glued it to the running board with super glue and to the frame with just regular uh, plastic model cement. Like I said, I'm going to paint the other one semi-gloss black before I trim them and put them in place. And here I am just painting up those brackets. Just makes life a little bit less fiddly. And I did not paint the attachment points. And here I am putting the last of the running gear, the running board supports on. I still had to touch that one up, paint it black, but that was my test one to see if they were going to fit okay. Okay. Well, looking at some photos on the internet of cars, mainly because I was trying to decide if I was going to bother putting wires into the engine compartment, something I've never done before. So, of course, I thought, well, I better see what the wires going to the spark plugs look like. And as I was looking at those pictures, I realized that our car doesn't have a distributor cap. And looking on the instructions, I saw that, you know, obviously the one that was on there came astray at some point during the last 30 odd years. So I made one out of some little scraps of styrene. And that critter is going to be installed right there in that little hole. Okay, we're getting ready to put the radiator on. Before we do that, I'm just going to go over some of the work that's been done. Um, as mentioned earlier, I've added a distributor cap there. I still haven't decided whether I'm going to put any wiring into this. Um, I'll do that probably once I get all the body together. If we flip it over, you can see the running board supports are in place. Um, the wheels are on, but I can pop them off if I have to. 
They're definitely not spinners. They're very tight fit. In preparation for gluing the radiator on, I've scraped, scraped the paint from this area here. And it doesn't quite sit level, but it's not the end of the world. As well, in preparation for gluing together the radiator, I've got the hood and I've got the body just so I can set those in so I can make sure that where I've got the radiator is everything else is going to be happy with that. There's no point in putting the radiator in and then putting the rest of the body together and I've got a huge gap. I've decided I'm going to use my Tamiya plastic model cement for gluing this in. It is a solvent type cement just like the testers and precision poly there or flexifile actually that one is of the three types of solvent cement I have this one is the thickest I'm pretty sure it has a fair amount of styrene already dissolved in it the reason I want to use it for this is the the fit isn't perfect, so I want, I want something that has a little bit of body to it. It's a slow setting cement, so I'm also going to have a fair amount of time to fiddle with it before it sets up hard, which is fine. So one of the things we want to ensure is that this is perpendicular to the frame and that it's square with the frame this way and I'm going to be using the body pieces to check that out. Okay hopefully nothing falls apart here. You can see that it were pretty much closed the gap here and that we're pretty straight there so we we'll want to Make sure everything's happy, and then we're just going to let it set for a couple hours to dry. Okay, the medium blue has had a few days to dry. And as you can see, I've got masking tape on around the trim. I didn't mask this back piece here because the convertible top is going to sit over top of that. So if I make some mistakes, it won't be too serious. This area here, I'm just going to end up freehanding. Hopefully that turns out all right. Main thing is, is while I was putting the masking tape on, I took a piece off and it took some of the light blue paint off. Oh no. So I'm going to do the trim is going to do up the trim, take the tape off. If more of the paint lifts off, I'll try touching it up with a brush and then I'll try using some rubbing compound to blend it in. If that doesn't work, then I'll just have to, you know, start from square one and repaint it again. Although the silver paint that was on it did not have a really shiny finish on it. It was fairly flat. So I was hoping that that would be an adequate base coat for this paint, especially seeing as the old paint had been on there for 30 years. Okay, the masking tape has been removed. I'm not 100% happy with the results. As I mentioned earlier, some of the paint lifted off here from the masking tape. That'll have to be retouched a little bit here. Tiny little bit of bleed through under the tape there. So that will have to be retouched and then being as it'll be brush painted on, I'll have to take some rubbing compound and smooth it out. Here's the hood. And there's a little bit of lift off right there as well. But the important thing is, is the lines are nice and straight and they're fairly crisp. Just one small little bit here I'll have to touch up. But otherwise I think it was worth masking and putting the trim on this way. All right, this pretty much concludes part two. 
I'm estimating that I have enough footage for part two. As a recap, the radiator's been installed. I've finished painting the underside and I've got the running board supports on there. The body has been painted. Still have a few touch-ups to do. I'll see you next time on Dan's Model Works. Thanks for watching. Bye.